Hi guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. Today I want to do the alphabet soup book tag E. E is for ending maybe, I think? <laughs> I don't remember now. It's the E one though. Um, these are, the alphabet soup book tags are a series of book tags that are created by Sean the Book Maniac and I will obviously leave his channel and original tag video as well as all of the prompts down, listed down below. Um, but yeah, this is just a book tag that centers around the letter E. So I have previously done the letter A and the letter N and so this is the third one he put out and I thought that I'd give it a whirl too. So let's get into it. So the first prompt is E is for ending. Name a book with a good ending and a book with one that sucked. So for me, I'm going to say for the good ending, Unbroken. This may seem like an odd book to choose because there are so many fiction books that have great endings. This is a nonfiction book. It is about the life of Louis Zamperini. Um, he was an Olympic track athlete in the 1930s, and then he enlisted in the military during World War II. Um, he was a bombardier. He got shot down over the Pacific Ocean and floated in a raft for 40 plus days. I think it was 42 days um, that he spent on a raft in the middle of the Pacific Ocean before he was eventually picked up by the Japanese and put in a prisoner of war camp. He survived that and came home and lived his life. So the reason that I say that this has a great ending is because the ending is something that is not covered in the movie. So a lot of people have seen the movie adaptation of this book, which is also fantastic. Um, however, it leaves out the end of the book, which for me was the most heartfelt and impactful part of the book. And the end of the book basically goes on to explain how he eventually attended a Billy Graham crusade and became saved and went back to, by saved I mean he became a Christian. Um, he went to Japan and faced his captors and told them that he forgave them and granted forgiveness to them and then came home and started a camp for wayward boys and spent the entire rest of his life in ministry to help those that needed it. And that aspect of the book, I mean, this is not spoilers. This is his, like, this is a biography, so it's not spoilers, but that whole part of the book was left out of the movie. And to me, that was the most impactful part is the fact that he was able to come to a place where he forgave the people who tortured him when he was in the prisoner of war camp and how much of a testimony that is to his life as a whole. So Unbroken, hands down, one of my favorite books of the year, but fantastic ending. All right, the ending in my opinion, that sucked. And this is like, I don't know how I feel about saying this, but um, that is If You Want to Make God Laugh by Bianca Murray. This book I gave four stars to. I really love this book. Um, I know I posted a, you know, dedicated book review to this and I went in that book review and explained a lot of the things I didn't like about it. And I felt really bad after that because I really do like this book. The whole book I loved, the ending, I found very problematic and I didn't think that the ending of this book was realistic and I felt like it was too um, like best case scenario which doesn't happen um, so yeah I did not like the end of this book but I'm not gonna spoil it I loved the whole book as a whole I loved which is why I got four stars I just didn't love the end of it, so. Hey guys, editing Amanda here. So I just realized that I never told you what this book was even about. Um, so If You Want to Make God Laugh is a story set in post-apartheid South Africa. Um, Nelson Mandela just became president. And it is a story of three different women. One is a young pregnant, pregnant black lady. Two older white women. One is an ex-stripper. One is an excommunicated nun. Um, and it's just their story and how their stories all kind of coincide and come together to form a bigger story. Um, but it was so good. Lots of talk about 
um, AIDS, the AIDS epi epidemic that was taking place in South Africa at the time, um, race, sexuality, all of that is all discussed in this, and it was absolutely fantastic, so still check it out. So back to the tag. Still check this out, though. Read it. It is important. I love it. Moving on. All right, so prompt number two is E is for elderly, and that is name one of your favorite memorable elderly characters. And for me, this is obviously going to be Mr. Marsworth from Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth, which is one of my favorite middle grade books of the year. Um, I'm going to have to put a picture up because I have lent the book out and still have not gotten it back yet. But Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth is a book that is set during the Vietnam War, and it follows a little girl who has a paper route and one of the elderly men on her paper route, and they start writing letters back and forth. And so it is epistolary. Um, it's all written in letters, um, and it's just their communications back and forth. And the little girl is very concerned that her brother is going to be drafted. And that's kind of the premise of the book. And Mr. Marsworth writes to her about that concern. And I loved this book so, so, so much. So obviously Mr. Marsworth is my most beloved elderly character. All right, prompt number three is E is for EU. And this is to name a contemporary author that is from the European Union, one that you would recommend and or one that you would like to look into or maybe read something from. So for me, the one that I would recommend is obviously Frederick Bachman because I'm obsessed with this book. And yeah, I've read three books by him now. I've read Bear Town, Us Against You, and A Man Called Uva. Um, Bear Town is hands down my favorite of the three, um, but I've enjoyed all of them. Um, but yeah, his work is just so profound. And the fact that it's translated to English is just shocking and I think that as much as people talk about how um, impactful his writing is I think the translator needs to be commended just as much because you can't even tell it's translated because it's done so well so hands down Frederick Bachman he's from Sweden um, he is a brilliant author and then one that I would like to check out is Diane Sutterfeld and she is from uh, Great Britain. Sorry. Had a mind fart, but she's from Great Britain and she wrote The 13th Tale as well as a couple other ones, but The 13th Tale is the one that has been on my TBR. So, um, yeah, I would like to check her out. I have not read any of her works so far. So the next one is E is for E, a writer you would recommend whose first or last name begins with E. And for this one, ah, where'd it go? Um, for this one, I am going to recommend Eric Shannonauer. Um, he adapted the wonderful Wizard of Oz into graphic novels. And these are produced by Marvel. They are published by Marvel. Um, but the thing that really impacted me with these, I read this first one last week. Um, and absolutely fell in love with this book. Like, hands down five stars absolutely loved it. That's kind of a sneak peek to my wrap up um, to the point where I immediately went to my library and checked out the whole remainder of the series because I want to binge read them now. Um, but I think the part that impacted me quite a bit was at the very beginning of this book. Let me see if I can find it. There's these two pages that are just print and it says blame it on Toto and it's a whole explanation of what the Wonderful Wizard of Oz meant to Eric Shannonauer and how some people get into Harry Potter. That's how he got into the wonderful Wizard of Oz. He joined uh, like online communities, uh, wizarding communities focused around the Wizard of Oz. He read all the adaptations. He watched the movies. He watched the plays. He like he really loves this story. And so when he was approached to translate that into comic form, he was just head over heels excited and he really felt the need to be super true to the books because they meant so much to him and so you see that throughout the book that just the little details here and there that he didn't want to leave out just because it's in a shortened graphic novel form um this was just such a good 
representation I feel like of the actual book and I've never read the actual book so I can't really speak truth to that I guess but it felt like it was because of that explanation of what this story meant to the author um so Eric Shannonauer is like I said the author of the retelling it's based off of a book by L Frank Baum and it is um illustrated by Scotty Young so but his um Wonderful Wizard of Oz graphic novel series highly highly recommend so that is the author um number five e is for exploration a new writer theme or genre you would like to try so for me nobody's gonna find this a shock but for me the genre that I would like to try to get into more are classics so I have a couple here I have Pride and Prejudice and Alice in Wonderland um I tried reading Little Women this month and I just couldn't make myself do it. I was so bored and it was just not connecting with me. And I don't know if I'm just not a classics, not into classics, but I want to like classics. I have so many of these that I own because they're such big pillars in the literary world. And I feel like I should have some reference when, you know, when talking about them and I should, I should love them. And so I really want to give them a fair shot. And that's one of my goals in 2020 is to try to read at least a few classics um, because I really have never read any. Um, I read Huckleberry Finn when I was in school because it was required reading. That's one of the only required readings that I actually read. But I really loved it. Um, and then I read half of Vanity Fair when I was... I don't even know how old I was. I maybe in college, um, right after I got out of college. I don't even know. But I do remember reading half of Vanity Fair. Maybe I was in high school. I don't know. It was when the movie came out. When Van the Vanity Fair movie came out, was that Reese Witherspoon maybe that was in it? I don't even remember. I read. I ended up reading half of that. Never finished it though. Um, I just I've never been one that has connected with classics and it makes me sad I want to so I do want to try to love classics and that's not new but it's something that is not currently in my reading resume so all right um number six is Eve is for et tu brute and that is a book in which betrayal plays a central role and for this one, I'm going to say Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Um, woo! This is a book that is about the Tennessee Children's Home Society and its um, founder, uh, Georgia Tan. She basically stole children from the riverside in Tennessee and sold them to people who thought they were adopting unwanted orphans. And there's a lot of betrayal in that. And there's a lot of betrayal in this book. And yeah, this book is phenomenal. Um, I just bought the nonfiction book that Lisa Wingate ended up writing as a follow-up to this that follows some of the real children that survived the Tennessee Children's Home Society ordeal. Um, I just purchased that and I'm hoping to get to that uh, during the month. So very much recommend this book, but lots of betrayal going on there. All right, number seven, E is for Exception, a book that you liked despite it containing a fatal flaw. So for me, this was one that was hard for me because I don't have a lot of like fatal, fatal flaws. Um, but for me, this one, I decided to mention The Dreamer by Pam Yunos Ryan and Peter Sis. So this one to me, the reason I'm saying that I love this despite a fatal flaw is because I adore Adored this book there was just something that was musical about it to me it has it's illustrated it's middle grade um, it's a shorter book I read it during middle grade March um, but it follows the true story of Pablo Pablo or Paulo Pablo Neruda um, and he is a famous uh, uh, poet from Chile yeah from Chile sorry um, and the reason I'm saying that I love this despite a fatal flaw is because there's not a whole lot of plot in this book, which I am definitely a plot driven reader. I do not like books where I read them and I'm like, but nothing happened. Um, and this is kind of 
one of those books um, where it is definitely more character based um, and gets into the life of the childhood, the childhood life of Pablo Neruda. Um, and I didn't know that going into it, that it was based off of a real person. Um, but I just loved the, how poetic this book was and how musical it seemed, even though it wasn't about music. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And looking back on it, there's not really a reason why I enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, when I put it up to some of the other books that I really enjoyed this year, um, I can't like put a finger on why I enjoyed it because it's not typically a book that I would say I loved it, but I loved it. So it is what it is. That is what I'm going to say for that. Um, number eight, E is for E, lots title with lots of ease. So a book with lots of ease in the title. Um, and for this one, I scoured my shelves and came up with The Smell of Other People's Houses. Um, this is by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I have no idea what this book is about, but I got it at a library book sale a few months ago and it has one, two, three, four, five, six E's in it. So that was the most I could find on my shelf. Like I said, I have no idea what it's about though. So, um, Number nine, E is for Ever Present, a book you read long ago that has really stuck with you. And for this one, this is another one that I had a hard time about because not a lot of books stick with me. And books that I read a long time ago typically do not stick with me. I tend to forget them. Um, and then when I was looking at Goodreads and what I've read in the past, I realized I never really started tracking my books until like 2016, 2017, which isn't that long ago. So I don't know. I ended up picking The Kitchen House because this is one that I read a few years ago. It was at least three or, three or four years ago. Um, and this is by Kathleen Grissom. And this is one that I still recommend as one of my favorite historical fictions. Um, and the reason I picked this one is because there are still scenes in this book that I can vividly see in my head. Um, and specifically like near the end of this book, um, there's a big fire and that whole scene, I can still see it, the whole thing playing out, all the characters, all of that. And that's saying something for it being a few years and me having a really shoddy memory. So yeah, so I love The Kitchen House if you have not read this. This is about Lavinia, who is Irish, and she comes over from Ireland to the United States. Um, this is during slavery, and both of her parents die on board. This is right at the beginning of the book, so it's not spoilers. But both of her parents die on board and so to pay for the cost of the trip over she becomes an indentured servant to a plantation owner and so she basically lives with the slaves and is a slave but she's white and so eventually she gets called to work in the big house and it's just the dichotomy of her working as a slave but being white and having friends that are black and friends that are white and how those barriers kind of um, get muddled and I loved it. I love this book so much. So anyway. All right. And then number 10 is E is for eliminate. Um, a book, a group of books that you want to get rid of or have gotten rid of and why. And so this was kind of hard for me because I don't really get rid of books because I tend to buy books after I've read them and they're ones that I know that I want to own. Um, but I do have a quite a collection of parenting books that I've never read and probably will never read and really have no interest in. So um, I just have all sorts. I have, this is preschool wise, it's the same as baby wise, except for preschool. I have Raising Uncommon Kids. This is like a biblical one. Um, Out of the Spin Cycle, I'm pretty sure this is a devotional uh, for mothers. Um, Scream Free Parenting could probably use this. Will I ever read it? Probably not. I do better with listening to like podcasts or speakers speak on subjects on parenting rather than actually reading books. I tend not to really like reading self-help books very much. Um, occasionally I'll read, like I'll listen to one on audiobook, but actually sitting down and physically reading a book, I couldn't tell you the last time I actually sat down and physically read a self-help book. And I probably never will. So there's really no reason for me to own all of these. Like I have a shelf in my main like book space that is all just parenting books and it's double stacked. There's no reason for that. So I probably need to just get rid of them at this point and move on. 
So that's what I'm saying for that, because I'm not getting rid of any of these. So, all right. The last one is 11 E is for everyone and to tag extensively, which um, if you know me means that everybody is tagged. So um, I'm not going to call out anybody specific, but I love seeing these tags. I think it's very interesting because it's such a diverse group of questions all kind of within one tag. And I really love that Sean is putting these out. So um, if you have already done um, A and N, I encourage you to do E. And if you haven't done any of them, then start at the beginning with A. And yeah, that's it for this tag. So if you're familiar with any of these books that I mentioned, or you have any comments about them, feel free to leave those comments down below. Also, if you have different answers to some of these questions, if you'd like to share your answers to any of them with me, feel free to leave those in the comments down below as well. And other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.